Excellencies, honorable delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure to, of presenting the latest state of food security and nutrition in the world. This year, we focus on addressing high food price inflation for food security and nutrition. As in previous years, this is a collaborative effort of IFAT, WFP, WHO, UNICEF and FAO, a clear example of UN agencies' collaboration. Let me start first by summarizing what we find in the SOFI this year. This year, the edition of food security, state of food security and nutrition in the world brings a message of both hope and urgency. On the positive side, we are seeing signs of progress. Global hunger has slightly declined from 8.7 to in 2022 to 8.2 in 2024. That's encouraging, but let's be clear, 673 million people still go hungry today, and its current trends continue over, continue over 500 million people could still be hungry by 2030, far from reaching our goal of zero hunger. But hunger is just a part of the story. Nearly 2.3 million people lack regular access to food, and over 2.6 billion can't afford a healthy diet. While there has been some progress in child nutrition, the world remains off track to meet any of the seven global nutrition targets by 2030. This year's report takes a deep look at one of the biggest threats of food security and nutrition today, food price inflation. Since the pandemic, food prices rising faster than overall inflation, hitting consumers and policymakers hard, especially in poor countries. Behind this surge lies a perfect storm, massive pandemic, Traded spending, supply disruptions from the war in Ukraine, extreme weather events, and a strong US dollar that made food imports more expensive. The impact has been especially severe in low and lower middle income countries where high prices have worsened food insecurity and increased child malnutrition. Nutrient rich foods like fruits and vegetables and animal products remain out of reach for many. Meanwhile, even basic staples through cheaper have been sharper price increases adding pressure on poorest households. Yet, Amidst of these challenges, there is a silver lining. Compared to past food crises, especially 2007 2008, the global response today has been more coordinated, more measured, and more informed. In short, colleagues, progress is happening, but not fast enough. We must intensify our efforts that mean ensuring that food is accessible, affordable, and nutritious for all. It means working together across countries, sectors, and institutions to end hunger and malnutrition once and for all. Let me now go deeper into some of the indicators to analyze the, the, the year trends of those. The SDG indicator used to monitor hunger is the prevalence of undernourishment. What you can see in this graph is the evolution of the prevalence of undernourishment and the number of undernourished people. Updated global estimates point to signs of decrease in global hunger in recent years, as I mentioned before. An estimated 8.2% of global population faced hunger in 2024, down from 8.5% in 2023 and 8.7% in 2022. It is estimated that between 638 and 720 million people, this is the midpoint of 673 million people, in 2024 face hunger. Now, this indicates a decrease of 15 million people compared to 2023 and 22 million people compared to 2022. However, about 96 million more people face hunger in 2024 than in 2015 when the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals was launched. Now, it is important to understand and to see the regional differences within these countries. So differences among regions and subregions of the world are starting. The progress seen at the global level is driven by notable important improvements in Southern, South, Southern Asia, which reflects new data from India, Southeastern Asia, and South America. Unfortunately, this positive trend contradicts with the continuing rise in hunger in most of the subregions of Africa. In Eastern Africa, and the nourishment is stable, and in Western Asia, in 2024, hunger affected about 307 million people in Africa, 3 million people in Asia, and 34 million in Latin America and the Caribbean, 20.2, 6.7, and 5.1% of the population, respectively. From 2025 to 2030, the global number of undernourished is expected to decrease, but 512 million people are still projected to be facing hunger in 2030, of whom nearly 60% will be in Africa. This points to the urgent need to accelerate efforts towards achieving SDG2, particularly in Africa. Now, beyond hunger, some progress has also been made towards the broader goal of ensuring regular access to, earth to, to adequate food in increasing years. At the global level, the prevalence of food insecurity based on the FIES, the Food Insecurity Experience Scale, which measures access to food, has declined gradually since 2021. 
the year when trends began to show signs of improvement following the sharp increase in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. The global prevalence of decreased, mar de decreased marginally from 28.4% in 2023 to 28% in 2024. In 2024, about 2.3 billion people in the world are estimated to have been moderately or severe food insecurity, 335 million more than in 2019 before the pandemic and 683 million more than in 2015 when the 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development Goals was launched. Trends at the regional level differ notably with food insecurity on the rise in Africa, falling in Latin America and the Caribbean and decreasing gradually in Asia for several consecutive years while in Oceania and in Northern America and Europe, new estimates point to a slight decline from 2023 to 2024 following a severe year of rise. Persistent inequalities between men and women are evident, and in this graph we observe the evolution of the difference in prevalence of severe and moderate food insecurity between women and men. After widening considerably in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, the gender gap narrowed at the global level from 2021 to 2023. But new estimates point to a widening of the gaps between 2023 and 2024, driven mostly by Asia and to a lesser extent by Northern America and Europe. Food prices rose throughout 2023 and 2024, pushing up the average cost of a healthy diet globally. Despite the increase in food prices, the number of people unable to afford a healthy diet in the world fell from 2.76 billion in 2019 to 2.6 billion in 2024, fueled by an economic recovery from the pandemic. However, the improvement has been very uneven across regions. The number of people unable to afford a healthy diet decreased significantly in Asia and marginally in Latin America and the Caribbean, North America and Europe and Oceania. But in Africa, the number increased from 864 million in 2019 to just over 1 billion in 2024, indicating that a healthy diet is out of reach for two thirds of the population of Africa. The unequal recovery is even more evident across countries' income groups. The number of people unable to afford a healthy diet in low-income countries has been steadily increasing since 2017, where areas in upper-middle-income and high-income countries, the number has been declining since 2020. In lower- and middle-income countries, the number, of decrease from, the number decreased from 2020 to 2024, but this improvement is mainly explained by significant decreases in unaffordability in India. Excluding India, there is an increasing trend in lower middle income countries in the number of people unable to afford a healthy diet. In low income countries, the number increased from 464 million in 2019 to 545 million, 72% of the population in 2024, and in lower middle income countries, excluding India, from 791 to 369 million, 52% of the population in the same period. Animal nutrition is not only an integral part of SDG2, but it is central to the achievement of nearly all of the sustainable development goals. Some progress has been made with notable improvements in the global prevalence of exclusive breastfeeding until six months of age. Improvements lay the groundwork for children's future health and well-being. For the prevalence of stunting among children under five years of age, moderate progresses have been made, but 23.2%, nearly one child over four, is stunted. However, anemia among women aged 15 to 49 years has increased and adult obesity is on the rise, pointing to the need for urgent action to turn these trends around. One essential line of action to end all forms of malnutrition is to improve the quality of people's diets. In 2025, a new global nutrition indicator was endorsed to monitor SDG target 2.2, minimum dietary diversity. Globally, about one-third of children aged 6 to 23 months and two-thirds of women aged 15 to 49 years achieve a minimum dietary diversity according to the latest estimates. Actions are needed to enable consumption of diverse diets from women and children. Now, let me move into the effect of the food prices. Why it matters? First, it matters because of political stability. Second, it matters because of macroeconomic stability. Food security and nutrition is also central because it is being impacted. In terms of political stability around the world, 46% to 80% of voters consider food prices as a decisive factor in their election choice. In macroeconomic stability, for 60% of countries, food products represent more than 25% of the CPA basket. 
And of course, in terms of food security and nutrition, it hurts vulnerable groups because they are the ones that consume the biggest share of their income in food. Now, what has been happening? As you can see in the graph, there has been a significant increase of the inflation, so overall food prices, but also a specifically food price index. Clearly, the food price index have, have gone faster and steeper than the consumer pricing index. What this means is that the food commodity share of the basket was growing faster than the non-food commodity share. This reflects the importance of food price inflation. At the onset of COVID-19 pandemic in early 2020, overall inflation, which reflects price changes across all items typically consumed by households, including food, remained relatively low. However, even in the period of food price inflation, which measures the change over time in the price level of foods and non-alcoholic beverages that households consume, was higher than headline or general inflation, significantly outpacing it. As governments began to relax pandemic-related restrictions and the global economy started to recover, overall inflation was picking up by mid-2021. Subsequently, the eruption of the war in Ukraine in February 2022 exacerbated the increase in prices of agricultural commodities, fertilizers, and energy, which translated into higher overall prices with major effects on food prices. At its peak in January 2023, food price inflation was 5.1 percentage points higher than headline inflation, 13.6% versus 8.5%. So clearly, what we observe is a higher food price inflation relative to the others. And essentially, what this graph shows is the evolution depending on the different elements that affect food price inflation. Now, what we need to understand from this and what is so important to look into this? First, we need to understand that food price inflation is, the, is developed because of demand-driven, supply-driven, and imported and monetary variables. Governments mobilize around 17 trillion of fiscal support, and this support was equivalent to nearly 10% of the global gross domestic product over two years. The US dollar index climbed by around 20% against a basket of global currencies during the past year. Between June and September this year, the dollar index reached high historical values at the United States Federal Reserve, raised its policy rates by 225 basis points. The global interest rate shocks has been accompanied by capital flows from developing countries, mainly driven by the higher yields on land, long-term government bonds across advanced economies, and the investors' quest for relatively safe assets. Thus, between March and July 2022, close to 32 billion had flown out of the developing and emerging markets. In two years, more money was created than in, previous, in the previous decade. But also, there were supply shocks. The COVID-19 impacts on value chains raising energy prices and the war in Ukraine in extreme and extreme weather conditions events also accelerated in 2022. Also, we have observed a strong appreciation of the US dollar by more than 20% compared to low and middle income countries currency by 2022. And finally, as I mentioned before, there has been expansionary policies, fiscal policies and monetary policies that has expanded the demand effects. So we will have supply effects and demand effects that we need to analyze. Finally, when we look at the domestic food inflation versus global food commodity prices, we see some differences. In the green line, you observe the commodity food prices. And as you can see, they vary more. They have a peak and then they decrease after COVID-19 and the war in Ukraine, while the food price inflation continues to increase consistently with no changes. And as we can see, commodity prices are reported by the FA of Prusa food price index show more variability than the domestic food inflation. Now, food price inflation has been particularly acute in low-income countries, with a pronounced peak between mid-2022 and mid-2023, when food price inflation rates were as high as 30%. During this period, the headline inflation also increased by less than food price inflation, indicating that food prices were the primary driver of the cost of living increases in these countries. Lower-middle-income countries and upper-middle-income countries also saw substantially surges on food price inflation but less pronounced than in low-income countries. In contrast, food price inflation in high-income countries remain more controlled and closer to headline inflation rates, although between late 2022 and late 2023, food price inflation increased considerably. Now, the relationship between food prices 
and food security can be confounded by several variables, country-specific characteristics, economic growth levels, and education natural disasters, for example. What we do here is we estimate a model that controls for several of these confounding factors. Overall, we estimate that a 10% increase in food price is associated with a 3.5% increase in moderate or severe food insecurity, and a 1.8% touch points increase in severe food insecurity. This year report finds that the prevalence of undernourishment as well as moderate or severe food insecurity decreases slightly in the post-COVID period. However, in a context of considerable rebound in economic growth, we will have expected much longer improvements, larger improvements. Our results suggest that food price inflation may have offset some of the gains from economic recovery. Further, analysis in the report examines whether food price inflation has a greater impact on food security in specific countries or population groups. The data shows that food price inflation has a stronger association with food insecurity in countries with higher levels of income inequality compared to those with lower inequality. In addition, women's food security is disproportionately affected by food price inflation, reflecting persistent gender disparities. The same situation is observed for rural households. There is a strong association between food prices and food insecurity in rural areas compared to the urban ones. Colleagues, in conclusion, Compared to the previous prices, such as food price spikes of 2007 and 2008 and 2011, the global response to the source of the 2021 to 2023 inflationary shock was more coordinated, informed and restrained. One of the clearest examples is in the area of trade policies. While early crises were marked by widespread export bans and restrictive measures that amplify global uncertainties and price volatilities, the recent episodes saw fewer such interventions. Where they occur, they were generally short-term and less disruptive. Similarly, the importance of market transparency and timely information has been reaffirmed. Initiatives such as the Agricultural Market Information System established by the G20 in response to the 2007-2008 crisis have played a key role in enhancing transparency of global food markets. The global response to the high food inflationary period also demonstrates the value of robust institutions. Countries with sound responses structures, as well as established social protection systems, were able to protect the most vulnerable populations more effectively. One of the main messages of the 2025 edition of the SOFI report is that while food price inflation remains a pressing concern, it is not undefeatable. Sustained investments, strengthened policy coordination, greater transparency, and continued institutional innovations will be vital in building resilience to future shocks. These policy lessons offer a roadmap of addressing both intermediate impacts of food price inflation on food security and nutrition and the urgent goal of getting back on track to achieve SDG2 and affordable healthy diets for all. Let me finalize by saying that we know it can be done. We have observed in South America, we have observed in South Asia, especially in India, how things are improving. But it's important to understand that now, if we want to achieve SDG2, it's time for Africa to chime. This is your moment and no hesitations. You are paving the way. And if you accelerate your transformation of agri-food systems, you will do it. So let's start the change. Let's move forward so that we can get what we are expecting to get, a reduction of hunger to a negative trend so that in the next few years, Africa will change. Thank you very much. And it has been great uh, to be with you today. And let's move forward towards less food insecurity and to good food for all for today and tomorrow.